What's up guys? On today's how-to video, we will be doing some Porsche maintenance. We're gonna be changing the rotors and pads on our 987.2 to get ready to hit the track. All right, starting with what we're going to need for this install. T55 Torx, 10 millimeter, hammer, impact screwdriver, and I'm using a punch, and then we'll use some screwdrivers as well, uh, and needle nose pliers. So to start, we're going to basically get the brake sensor out of the way, and that's pretty simple. And we're actually not gonna be worrying about the brake sensor anymore, so we're actually removing it. And then we're going to take off the 10 millimeter that holds the brake line on to the car, or to the knuckle. And that's so that the um, caliper can actually be removed easily without bending the line. Um, it'll, it'll bend from here instead. Next up, we're going to loosen these screws before loosening the caliper. Um, I found that an impact, an impact screwdriver works the best. Uh, stripping those would not be cool. All right, grabbing the needle nose, we're going to remove this clip. And then the, the punch in the hammer, and we're going to hammer this out. Remove the wires and the clip. And then we have access to the brake pads. Now I'm gonna use two screwdrivers to actually spread the, the caliper out so that I can fit in a newer rotor and uh, thicker brake pads. If you're gonna reuse the rotor, you wouldn't want to do this because it, you could screw up and hurt the, either the brake pads or the rotor. So if you, if you can't do something like that, there are uh, caliper spreaders, um, but for me this works because I don't care about this rotor or the pads because they're street pads and we're basically getting rid of them. All right, so the, the pistons and the caliper are actually pushed all the way out and I did that by by basically pushing on both sides because it's four piston. If you press on this side, this side would actually push in. So you basically have to hit it from both sides and then all four pistons are out and that way we can put um, better, a better rotor and better pads in. Take your um, T55, T55, yeah T55 and we'll break this uh, caliper loose. Then we'll be able to uh, remove the pads and remove the rotor. Normally at this point, you'd be able to actually remove these pads, um, but Porsche has some type of, uh, it's either a damper or um, something to, to manage heat. I, I doubt it's heat, I think it's more a damper something to, to reduce noise, vibration, or harmonics uh, from the brake pads. But they actually go inside the pistons. It's something I've never seen before. It's kind of cool. Um, I'll show you a quick little shot of that, but I need to actually pull the caliper off to get to that point. All right, so as I was saying, this is why you can't pull the pads out with the with the caliper installed and it's these big, probably noise, vibration, harmonic dampers basically that, that reduce uh, noise for the Porsche. Um, we will actually be reusing those. 
but we will not be using the brake sensors any longer uh, because we'll actually be checking the brakes frequently enough and, and I see no reason to, to run them. All right guys, so we have the caliper kind of nestled up there so you're not putting a ton of strain on this guy. And we're gonna put on the new rotor. Now the only thing you have to make sure of is that the countersunk holes go in the same location as what's on the knuckle. So you can kind of line that up. And there you go, it's on. Two screws go back in the holes like you would think. All right, so something I'm currently seeing is that this does not look like it's, like it's sitting flush against the knuckle. So we're gonna have to basically sand one or the other or both um, to make sure that the rotor actually sits flat onto the knuckle. We are using a used rotor and that is basically because we have a 987.1 that was a track car and we purchased it with a blown engine for test fitment purposes and instead of purchasing brand new we spec these out and everything specs out like the rotor has plenty of life left the pads have good life left and they're actual track pads so we're just going to use that instead of uh, purchasing new as you can see we got some rust and stuff so we're going to clean that up real quick Probably have some, yep, got some rust on this too. So we're gonna clean up both of those, make sure that the surfaces actually go together really nice. All right, so basically I took a roll lock to the inside of the brake, and then I also took a roll lock to the outside of the knuckle. Everything looks like it's actually mounted together um, tightly. That basically ensures that the rotor isn't wobbling. Even though you have the torque from the wheels, if you have a piece of rust or something, it's gonna cause um, a slight uh, I don't know what you want to call this will wobble bad there you go wobble is bad all right so now we're gonna put the rotor or the caliper back on uh, the shims with the dampers on them are actually installed right now uh, so that is something that you don't need to worry about when installing the new pads if you're installing it this way grab our new pads and then we actually just slide them in all right we have our brake spring we'll have to put that on and then we can thread the uh, locking pin through the caliper and the brake pads and basically we'll push down on the spring as we push through that with that, and that allows everything to kind of go together. It's not exactly easy, I will admit that, but it will go together. And then we will get our spring for brake pin. So that's installed. So everything's installed at this point, and we're ready to put the wheel back on front. We'll go do the rears now, and uh, oh, need to do that 10 millimeter. You also would need to plug in the uh, brake pad sensors if you still run them, but again, we're not going to run them. Uh, but we'll do that 10 millimeter real quick and then uh, we'll move to the rears. All right, so the process is very similar on the rear. We're going to undo the, where is it at? The uh, brake sensors, 10 millimeter, we're gonna undo the T55 caliper. We're gonna pull that off. We're gonna pull the, everything apart. Basically, it's the exact same scenario. The only thing is there is brake drum in here for the e-brake. Um, that's the only big difference. So I'm not gonna really walk you through it. You can watch as I walk uh, work through it, but it's very similar to the front. Work. 
All right, so at this point you might notice that the rotor does not want to come off. And likely that's because of the parking brake. There's probably some rust. Uh, we actually don't have the parking brake on. Obviously, if you have the parking brake on, take it off. Um, there's a few ways that you can get a rotor off in this situation when it's kind of rusted to the, to the knuckle, uh, to, the, to the wheel bearing or whatever you want to call it. Um, you can run some, some bolts through these threaded holes right here. Not the holes that actually hold the rotor on, but the, there's actually these holes and they're really nice because they basically push the rotor out. Um, I, I guess I'll do that. But the other way is to, to hit a rubber mallet uh, or, or a hammer in this case because we don't care about the rotor. The rotor is trash. Uh, it's under spec. So there's two real, two or three uh, ways to do it. Um, we'll do it the, the more professional way. Uh, it's the least invasive in my opinion. You don't have to hit anything. The only thing is you cannot just hit one side. You have to do both and you have to do it slowly. Otherwise you, all, you do risk stripping or breaking a bolt off in there, which, which I have seen done and that does suck. All right, the bolt threads look to be M8 by 1.25. Generally speaking on imports, that is an, uh, a 12 millimeter head. So we have a 12 millimeter socket. All right, so now we'll reinstall in reverse order. So in this step, we're creating the uh, a brake sensor, basically foolers. Um, we took the OEM unit, stripped it, tied the wires together, and then we're gonna solder and shrink wrap it. Um, this basically, ensures that the light doesn't come back on and uh, the system, all systems stay happy. Again, we're, we're basically gonna be checking the brakes enough that we're not worried about running low on brake pad. So that's why we're doing this. The units are soldered and then we're gonna throw some heat shield on them. Uh, shrink wrap and heat that up real quick. So we pinch off the end and I'm not sure if you guys can actually see on the camera, hopefully it, it captures it. But this is actually double wall heat, sheet, heat shrink. It's actually got glue, and as you heat it up, the glue actually melts, and that actually creates a watertight seal. Uh, I highly recommend it for anything on the exterior of the vehicle, for sure. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Feel free to subscribe and follow us for more Porsche maintenance as well as other stuff that's got going on in our shop here at uh, Varus Engineering. Thanks.